I spy with my little eye windows installed by this guy. Hey everybody, Sam here. Welcome back to Samcraft. Welcome to the next video in my building my own workshop series where I took nothing but bare dirt and I've built something on it. In today's video, I'm going to be installing windows and trimming out those windows. So if you're interested to see how I install windows in a structure, especially when a structure has finished siding already installed, as well as trim those out, then stick around. We're gonna start our prep work by opening up the window and getting it out of its plastic wrap. This is just gonna save us time and effort while we're up there actually installing the window into the building. So this is a new construction window and it has these flanges around the whole perimeter with holes pre-drilled. These are what you put your screws through and attach your window to your structure. There are a couple of different window styles. There's this style with the nail flange and there are others where you do face frame where you attach it from the inside. So if it's important to you which style you get, just know that there are at least two different styles out there, if not more. I like the nail flange for new construction. It's easy to install. Gives you a nice lip for your sealant to go between your building and your window. And when you add your trim on the outside, looks perfectly fine as well. Alright guys, just got the tractor set up over here and I have my man cage, I don't know what it's called, it's a work platform, got it set up, now I'm going to grab my ladder, set it over here in front of this, climb up the ladder and climb in the work cage. It's kind of what I do when I'm by myself, but hey, it's a lot better than doing all this work just from the ladder. Prerequisite work is to have your window have your structure framed up correctly, your siding cut, and to basically have yourself a hole, your window, and your supplies for this portion of the step. I've covered all of this stuff in previous videos of this full workshop build playlist. There's a link to that down below if you want to check it out. Step one is to flash it out. Flashing tape, that is. I like to use six inch wide rolls, but they're also available in four inch, eight inch, 10 inch, various different widths. Flashing tape is a waterproof, super sticky tape membrane that acts as a water barrier between your building, your siding, your window framing, and all those members, and the great outdoors of moisture. It is a necessary and vital step, and it really will set your project apart from being mediocre, probably going to fail in the future, to being perfectly right, probably won't fail in the future. As far as the steps to flash out your window opening, you start with your bottom, Put your piece in place there, then you do your left side, your right side, install your window, and then you put your piece on the top. But you guys will see all these steps as we go through them here. First thing first, cut our piece for the bottom. Just roll out your tape, give yourself about two, two and a half inches overlap on the right side and on the left, and then using a utility knife, just slice and cut your flashing tape. What I then like to do is fold it in half before I peel off the backing and give myself a crease. That way when I go to install it, I can line this crease up with the middle of my window. Usually there's a cripple stud right there. And I know as long as I line it up here, I won't be shortchanging myself on the outside edges. Now we peel off the backing, which depending upon your tape, the temperature, and your own personal skills might be super easy or take the longest of this entire job. Now is when I line up my piece right here on the outside of the window. The number one thing you wanna try and do is split it in the middle height wise. So half is on your window sill, half is on your exterior siding or your sheathing, depending on how you're building your structure. Once you have it in place, go ahead and press it down firmly rubbing it and attaching it to your siding or your sheathing. 
Once you have it attached on the outside, using your utility knife, go to your edges and cut down right where it overlaps and then lay this piece inside to your window seal. I like to start in the center, pulling a piece right there and then work my way over, trying to make sure we have a firm seal, no large air bubbles or any kind of folds. I also will use the hand over here to hold the tape up, but also apply pressure that way to kind of stretch the flashing tape and get a better seal. After it's down there, you just rub it down into place and then you can move on to the next step. You do the same thing with the sides. Put your tape where it half overlaps on your wall, half sticks into your wall or window opening. Press it down very firmly to your siding and then using a utility knife, cut a slit at the bottom and the top of your opening and then fold it in on the window framing. Okay, the flashing is installed on the bottom, the left side, and the right side. What I'm going to do next, since I know my windows fit, I've already test fit and installed two others, I know my window will fit, I'm going to go ahead and install a bead of Lexel clear sealant around the perimeter on the wall, right on the window frame wall here where the window flange will attach. Put a big old bead there, then I'll lift my window up into place, hold it level, and begin attaching it with the screws. Depending upon your window opening, your window itself, what kind of conditions you're working with, whether it be new construction, old construction, or retrofit. You might have to shim your window. You might need to do some finagling to get it level and a lot more things than what I'm gonna to have to do with my construction. Mine's fairly easy because I just built all of this out. Everything is built square and level. So it truly is a perfect case scenario. All right, I'm getting the packing blocks off of the flanges and I have my lovely assistant here. She will be holding the level inside, helping to hold the window in place, as well as sitting on a couple little shim blocks, just to make sure it's perfectly centered in the opening, and then I'll start attaching it and screwing it to the wall from the outside. There? Uh-huh. All right, the screws I'm using are GRK cabinet screws. These are number eight screws, two inch long. These are corrosion resistant. The most important thing is they are flat pan heads. Very good screws to use for window install. As far as attaching the window into the opening, I've got four screws holding it in place right now. Now I'm just gonna work myself around in a circular fashion, filling in all of the nail flange holes on this window. Takes a lot for a three foot by four foot window such as this one, but it's worth it. Do every single one. And there we go. The window is completely attached with screws. The last step for this install is to put my flashing tape at the very top. The last piece of flashing, you want it to go on top of your window, over top of your screws, like that. Push it down over top of your screws and then fold it up onto your wall, creating a large water shield plane that if water gets up here, it hits the flashing, it goes over your screws, over your flange, hits your windows trim or trough and goes on down and does not go into the wall. Things look good in here. It is so nice to have the windows installed in their openings now. These are dual pane thermal, low energy efficient or high energy efficient windows, whatever, the good ones, and they look fantastic. I'm glad that I got larger windows from my workshop. These are about three feet wide, four feet tall, much larger than any window I've installed in any previous workshop, but this looks really, really nice. All right, let's see how good this guy opens. Awesome. A little bit of leaves there from where it was stored in our carport, but this looks great. It operates nice and smooth, and this is a big window. Plenty of room for windows to do their window stuff. Nice. 
All right guys, it's the next day and I'm up here at our windows again and I'm going to be working on installing this, the exterior window trim. This is some stuff I picked up from a local hardware store. It is three quarters of an inch thick, three and a half inches wide and solid PVC or a PVC core. This is designed to be used in exterior applications. It will never rot, it will never ruin and it's pretty good to use. So there are basically two different ways I've seen most people trim out windows, at least with this kind of application. And I've done a Leonardo da Vinci sketch for you guys to really ooh and ah over here. The first trim style that I've seen used is where you cut your top and bottom trim boards to be the exact same length or width in their application as it's put on the building. And then you fill in your left and right styles with whatever length or height is of your window. I don't like this method because as water falls from top to bottom, it can rest and then find its way into your bottom board with that joint being there. And even though we did window flashing, window sealant, and everything of the sort, water should not cause any problems if it gets back there. I just don't like inviting it into the window area that much. So what I like to do is option number two. That is where the bottom trim board is the narrowest piece of all of them. The left and right sides actually fall down below it. That way there is no horizontal shelf or joint for water to hit, rest on, and go into your building. It's just a vertical plane that goes on down to the ground. And then the top board is the same as being full width to cover everything to act as a roof of sorts for your trim. As far as measuring and cutting this stuff, I like to do it right here in the field, right at my window. I measure the width of the actual protrusion of the casing. I then add a little bit of wiggle room to that measurement, something around a sixteenth of an inch. Go ahead and cut my bottom, my left and right sides, and then my top. Knowing that my material is three and a half inches wide, that means the left and right side are three and a half inches longer than the window itself measures out. And then the top board is seven inches wider than the window's width because you take into account the window plus your right and your left trim board. As far as attaching the boards to my structure, I'm using some GRK white trim screws. These have super tiny, tiny little heads, if you can even say that these screws have heads, and they countersink in and go into place very easily. Sometimes if you drive them too far, you may have to come back with a little bit of exterior sealant to fill it in. But otherwise, if you go slow and work your way into it, you can get these guys flush and they pretty much disappear, especially on a structure like this when you see it from a distance. The number one headache that you'll run into with this kind of application where I have the window installed and my finished siding also installed is that the window sticks out farther than anything else on this building is going to. That means that my trim is actually going to be tapered back from the window side to the siding side and it doesn't give me as pretty of joints and smooth corners at my junctions as it could be. Sure I could cut some shims, try and build it out, but honestly this is just trim. This is a workshop and I'm not going to go to that length for this installation. Just know that what you see as far as a little bit of eh gaps surely could be filled in with some exterior grade caulk and paint or just left as is or if you're more picky than I am, you can go ahead and get some shims, work really hard on getting it set in just right, but then don't forget to seal in all your backside of your trims with some sealant so that you keep weather and bugs out as well. All right, my trim boards are installed while I'm up here. I'm gonna use my knife and go ahead and trim the excess window flashing just so that it's out of the way because otherwise after time it will shrink up, it'll look weird, and it just looks odd to have a big black strip on your building. If you have any extra on your left and right, now would be the time to trim it as well. But thankfully, my trim covers it, so I am all done. I was just informed that I am not done. It's just on the far side of the trim, I couldn't see it. Okay, am I done now? Yes. All right guys, now I'm done.
there you have it guys. There is Sam's method. So one of many different methods that you can use to install windows into a structure, a workshop, a home, retrofit, whatever. When you have your finished exterior siding put in place, that's at least one way that you can put new windows in a building. In addition to that, you also got to see how I trimmed them out. And while it is not perfect, if you want to scrutinize it, there are some gaps, there are some things that we could tweak. But that just goes with the wonderful saying that if you've never heard it, caulk and paint make me the carpenter I ain't. And that one is worth remembering. But for me and for now, this looks great. I will caulk and paint everything, but it's getting into winter time now, so it's going to be in the springtime. But that is perfect as it is to ride through winter. If you guys got any questions or comments about this or anything you saw in this video, feel free to leave me a comment down below. Also remember, this is just one video in a full playlist of building this entire 20 by 32 workshop stick framed from the ground up. So if you're curious about other things you see here, maybe you just plopped and dropped on this one video from a search or for some other weird reason, there are a bunch of other videos down there below for you to check out if you would like to. Otherwise, take care. I'll see you guys next time working on the workshop.